The fourth gate in our lesson series here on logic gates, and the third gate that has multiple inputs is something called an exclusive OR gate. So we've got the exclusive OR, and sometimes you see it written as an XOR gate. Now, this one has some unique definitions to it, and I can't necessarily say we all agree. But let's start out with the mathematical one, where we have an A and being combined with a B into a logic gate, and we figure out what the output is going to be from that. So we have A, B, and then we have X. Now, with A and B, we have four possible combinations of ones and zeros. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. And the definition we're going to use for the A, the two input exclusive OR gate is this. Um, output a logic one if exactly one input is a logic one. All right, now, this definition is, and, and kind of suggests how we came up with the name exclusive or. So there are exactly two rows where there's exactly one one at the input, the second row and the third row of this two input gate. Now, the other two options, zero, zero, and one, one, you put zeros there. And you kind of see how it might have gotten the name exclusive OR. This looks like the two input OR gate. The two input OR gate is zero, one, one, one. In other words, remember the OR gate outputs a one if you have a one at any of the inputs. And we exclude the last line. And, it's, it's a really cool little gate because it, it compares things. It's, it, for example, if, if A and B are both the same, both a zero, you output a zero. If they're both the ones, then you output a zero. The only time you output a one is if there's different, okay? Now, there is another application for something like this. Um, and, and, and I'm gonna give kind of an example. In this example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that I want to store uh, one, two, three, four, five bits, okay? And so by storing those five bits, what I wanna do is kind of add a little something to it. And, and, and this little something is another bit that is going to be or represent the parity of the other bits. Let me try that again. So I've got this additional space here, and this one right here, I'm gonna take, if there's an odd number of ones at the input, at, at these, uh, of these bits, I'm gonna put a one here. If there's an even number of ones, I'll put a zero here. And the way that works is, is if you look at the whole block, all the data bits plus this bit, which is referred to as a parity bit, if you look at the total number of ones, the parity bit is set so that the whole number of ones in that block is an even number always. So since the data was three ones, we put an odd, it was an odd number, we put a one in the parity bit, and that's gonna give us one, two, three, four ones, even number. Now, what happens if one of our bits disappears? If one bit disappears, we've, we've corrupted our data, right? No, we've got this parity bit. And what we do is we look at all the bits, including the parity bit and say, okay, do we have an odd or an even number of ones? Well, if there's an odd number of ones, it should be even, so we put a one there and we get the bit back. Some versions of RAID arrays, the, these, these multiple disks in an array to act as a single disk, use a method like this in combination with other methods in order to solve the problem of what happens if one of the disks goes bad. And if one of the disks go bad, you know, if, if, if this zero went away, I don't know what was on it, the disk went bad. Well, I look at all the ones and realize there's an even number of ones, I put a zero there. That was the data that vanished, okay? So this gives us another definition of the exclusive OR. 
This other definition of the exclusive or is one that I'm going to use if we have more than two inputs to our exclusive or gate. And the definition goes like this. Um, output a logic one if the number of ones at the inputs is an odd number. Otherwise, output is zero. Um, and in fact, let's take a look at this little two input exclusive or uh, the, the, the way it is. So I have zero ones, that's an even number. One one, that's an odd number. One one, that's an odd number. Two ones, that's an even number. That matches this definition, doesn't it? Let's see what happens when we move to three inputs. So I have A, B, and C, and then I have X. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. All right, so there's all my rows in my truth table. Now, if you go down through this list, what you're looking at is an even number of ones, zero, an odd number of ones, one, one, outputs a one, an odd number of ones, one, one, outputs a one, two ones in the fourth row, outputs a zero. And so if you look at this, this is the same as our original truth table, right? The one with two inputs. But things change a little whenever you go into the bottom half. In the bottom half, the fifth row, one, zero, zero, there's one, one, that's an odd number. Sixth row, one, zero, one, that is an even number, two ones. Two ones in the seventh row, and in the eighth row, there are three ones, that's an odd number. So we have our three input exclusive or truth table here based on this new definition. Now, one of the things that's actually important is that if you took B and C and put them into an exclusive OR circuit, then you get this output. But then you take the output from that exclusive OR gate and cascade it into another exclusive OR gate with A, you would get this output. Let me go ahead and show you. And what I'm going to do before I show you, I'll show you what the circuit symbol looks like. The circuit symbol, remember our OR gate? Our OR gate had a curved input, right? And a pointed output. That was our exclusive, that was our OR gate. Well, the exclusive OR, instead of just having the one curved input aligned at the input, it has these two parallel curved inputs. That is the symbol for an exclusive OR. Basically on the input side, instead of having the single curve, you have these two lines, these two curves that run parallel to each other, but then the rest, the pointed output, still looks the same. And so you have A and B and then X. Okay. Now, what I was trying to describe with the relationship between the two input and the three input is that if I had a circuit that looked like this, so I have one, two input, and I take B and C, and I put them together like that, and then I put that as an input into another exclusive OR, cascading it, where I combine it with A, what happens is, is this says if they're the same, output a zero. If they're different, output a one. So you'll get this zero, one, one, zero. Now, when you get into this exclusive OR gate and combine it with A, what happens is when A is zero, if the output of B and C is zero, we output a zero. If A is zero and the output of B exclusive OR with C is a one, we output a one. When we get down to the bottom half of this truth table, if A is a one, and the exclusive OR of B and C is a zero, they're different, you output a one. If A is a one, and the exclusive OR output of B exclusive OR with C is a one, 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 same, zeros. So you can cascade these, that will work. 
Now for the last piece, the symbol that we use to represent the exclusive or. We did, remember, for the and, we did the dot. We had a dot b, right? Or a dot b dot c. For the or, we did a plus represents the or. Use the summation to represent the or. For the exclusive or, it's very similar to the or, except what we do is we put a circle around the plus sign to give us the symbol for the exclusive or. Now, in the next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to put all these pieces together in order to, well, combine them into combinational logic.